Welcome to this tutorial on introduction to the Xcode environment. When you've installed Xcode, the very first thing you'll be presented is with this landing page. Now you can see the version of Xcode I'm running. It'll be current for this version or future versions and it's a very good idea that you keep your Xcode right up to date. You don't need to show this when you start, but I find it's a good idea to show this panel. Also, as you code, you'll see all your projects appear on the right hand side here. Now a good place to start if you're new to coding is start at the playground. This is a really easy place to test code and also learn how to code. And then when you're ready, you can move on to actually making a project, either using the Swift UI kit or just the UI kit. And they are two different branches of coding that are supported by this environment. But first of all, let's start with the playground. So when you go into the playground, the very first thing it's gonna ask you to do is the type of device you would like to code for. So we can do it for iOS devices, right through the Mac OS as well. We can do a blank, we can look at games, a map, and also single view. We're just gonna start with a blank project and we're gonna click on next. First thing it's gonna do is ask you where you would like to save this. Now I'm gonna save this on my desktop, but the very first thing I do is gonna create a folder. I'm gonna actually call this folder, I'm actually gonna call this folder Xcode. Therefore, all my Xcode projects will be on my desktop inside this folder and click on create. Once we've done that, I can now give the project a name. So I'm going to call this one 00 Playground. It's a good idea to have a naming convention that you know what each project's for. As my courses go along, especially if you're in my classes, you'll actually see the naming conventions that I use and click on create. Now, the very first thing you're presented with is the working environment. You'll notice that we've got some simple code here which says import UI kit. So we'll be using that to code with. You can also see var stir equals hello playground. Up on the top right hand corner here, we actually have some panels that we can open. You can also see the play panel down the bottom here. This is where the code will execute. And then we can have the right hand side one, which gives you the location of the file and some of the information about what we're creating. Now I'm gonna stretch this out and take advantage of the full screen resolution. Now you'll notice that in this environment, up the top it's got the time, and lets you know that we're ready. Across the top we actually have some files and some other debugging and source controls that we'll look at another stage. But let's run our code. Now to execute our code, down the bottom here you'll see there is a little play. If we click on this, we can automatically run every time we make a change. You'll notice now on the right hand side, our code is now active. And it will show the outputs where the line occurs. So in this case here, you can see that hello playground has been put in a stir and you can actually see what's been placed into the string here. And if you'd like to see the result below the line, you can click this and you can see the results of each line as you go through. So it's up to you how you would like to manage your environment. Now, if we wanna create an output, what we can do is go print, and then we can output the actual variable. So in this case here, you can see that stir has got a V next to it. This is a string variable. So I can press enter, and it will type that out for me. Because I've set this to auto run, you can see down the bottom of the screen now, hello playground has automatically started. Now it's a good idea that you put comments into your code. To place a comment, you use two forward slashes, and then you can actually go, then you can write output. Now some people like to decorate these a little bit, so they go forward slash, forward slash, minus, minus, output so you know where the sections are. Now I recommend that you put developer comments throughout your code, and one of the very first things you need to put into your code is developer, and then put your name. Then if you're teaching a class, you can put subject. So you can actually put that in there. Also, depending on how you want to organize your files, you could go like term 01, week one, task one. And this way you can keep all your files organized. 
as we go through, we'll actually change this around and, but we'll always keep the developer comment there. Another thing you should put in there is the date as well. But if you use this naming convention here, term, week, and task, you probably don't need the date. But some people will put the date of development. And you can put in there like, you know, 01 slash 01 slash 22x, whatever it's gonna be. Now, once you're finished, you can actually go file and save. This will save the project to the file area that we specified at the start of the program. And then we can just leave. We can just go Xcode and quit Xcode. Or you can just hit the red dot to close out. When you go to open your program again, you'll notice that I now have the file up here, 00 playground. If I select that by double clicking, your program will open. If you can't see this program, make sure that you open up the left hand side menu system and then click on playground 00 and you'll see your code come back. So that's how we can access different projects as we go through. So anyway, I hope you found this introduction tutorial useful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel and have a look for other useful Xcode videos on my YouTube channel.